much. It's nothing uh, like starting a Saturday morning with some myth busting. <laughs> so now we know that uh, the Southern Europeans are not lazy. They actually work far more than we do. Uh, so the next speaker now is Yanis uh, Triantafilidis, and he will uh, uh, let us know how the situation is in Greece. Actually, they cut 
the benefits from the public sector and the health system and education so that they can cover the expenses of the tear gas. It might sound, it might sound a bit funny, but you have to understand that at certain points in this, the last two years, there had been a lot of tear gas. They had no more tear gas, so they had to ask uh, some help from Israel in particular to send us some more. Anyway, the point is what uh, is to be done. And uh, the situation appears to be desperate. And we have to understand that it is a point that social mo mobilization may give an answer because the system is not willing to give a clear answer to what is going on. So I will narrate um, a little bit what are the roots of the crisis. There is an important domestic factor about uh, the Greek uh, economy and the history of the economy from the 1950s. In the sec right after the Second World War, Greece was really devastated both in infrastructure, both from its capitals, <coughs> and also from the human population. In, in that period, you know, something like 10% of our population. So what followed that was a civil war. And right after the civil war, in the nine, end of the 1949, there was 24 years of a really authoritarian right government, which was preceded by a dictatorship. So during all this period, the economic policy had very little concern for a social agenda. It was, of course, a populist uh, agenda, but the aim was growth at any cost. The compensative um, weight was given to a social compromise, which is uh, tax discretion. So there were favorable tax uh, arrangements with the industrial sector. Also, the investments in the industrial sector were supported by the state from funds uh, that belong uh, to the state, like pension funds, uh, welfare funds, money that has never been given back, of course, to the state. But in order also to have the support of other classes in Greece, also farmers had an exception from tax. And generally speaking, the tax evasion by small business became sort of a legal tax evasion. And this is something that has been not taken care of by the state so far. In the early 1980s, when we thought that the things are changing because we had a so-called social government, actually it was the father of our present prime minister, so there's a discussion that the father started the job, the son is finishing it. So it's actually he's finishing us. But during the beginning of the 80s, a number of former national champions, like big ministries that thrive, suddenly were privatized, they were private, sorry, they were uh, nationalized. But what was really nationalized were the liabilities of these industries. We had huge textile industries, lots of uh, uh, food commodities and such things. Uh, I don't have to mention that all these industries do not exist anymore. After they were nationalized within like 10 years, they were all sad. And then we get uh, to the early 90s and the end of uh, 2000. At that moment, the productive sectors of Greece, manufacturing and agriculture, no matter that the European Union is claiming that has helped with subsidies, is that they really disappeared. And this is not so much due to the European Union, but European Union not really making sure that this money had been invested and not disappearing. We still don't know what happened with that money. And the only things that really happened, as far as, far as investments and production, if one can call it production, is concerned, was market liberalization, which helped the deepening of the financialization of our economy. At that moment, because the Greek government, which was actually, again, like the Socialist Party, 
that tried to make the integration so that we could join Europe. They used some shading schemes in order to get the numbers right. In reality, what they made, they tried to massage, let's say, the public finances with a varietal um, portfolio investments and the financial derivatives. In particular, Goldman Sachs has helped a lot in these situations. Greece has managed to get uh, lots of uh, swaps and derivatives. It made European Union happy, and it made appear that the things were doing well. However, when in 2009, there was a crisis. The same people, like the banks and the institutions that have helped Greece to hide its real numbers for the economies, are now reversing and are betting on the failure of the Greek economy. So actually, when in 2009 the crisis really hit Greece, it wasn't that the debt was so much severe as you saw. The debt was about uh, 120%, which was as much as Italy. It's much less than 200% uh, of Japan. But the real blow was that the markets and financial institutions betted and invested on the failure of the Greek economy. So after that, Greece cannot borrow money easily. The interests are really high, and then starts uh, a period where Greece is just standing defenseless, defenseless in such a time of crisis. When thinking that giving some numbers about how much Greece, Greeks have been working, actually my numbers from Eurostat are really the same because there is always a comparison between Greece and Germany because there is a big rivalry. It says that in 2005, when the average working in the European Union was 41.7, the German, 41.7 hours per week, I mean. In Germany, the work was 41 hours. In Greece, it was 44.3. Yes, it's not literally legal, but you have to understand that in Greece, uh, working legally is not uh, in private sector in particular. It's not uh, something that is an exception, it's uh, something very common. So, although we have this evidence that Greeks work longer hours than the German, the way that our economy is structured and counterparted by the way our predominant economy as the German is structured, we cannot be competitive. Germany, as my Portuguese colleague also mentioned, has a strategy of low, low wages. And this is consistent with its export-led uh, model. So on a long-term basis, we cannot really diverge our economies. We are very distant. And this is not compatible really within a monetary union. It could be compatible if the difference in the current account balance between uh, surplus and deficit number states would be compensated for by transfers. But of course, no country is willing to give its surplus to a country that has a deficit. So going further now to global factors, Coming back to financial speculations, when Goldman Sachs created these swaps and uh, the Greek public finances were expertly and legally disguised, within two years it is the same golden Goldman Sachs with JP Morgan, and we have evidence about it, that together with other banks they make some new companies. So the so-called is like the market group uh, of London, and they introduce new indexes. So in that, from that action, we have the severe fall in the economy. So it is the phenomenon that I mentioned earlier: the banks 
are betting this will default on a debt that they helped hide. As the Greek uh, crisis has demonstrated, such countries like Greece, Portugal, and in the future, I hope it won't be the case, but it will be more, can help host us by financial markets and by credit agencies. So, overall, the global, the global finance, actually this new liberal free market, as it has been mentioned also yesterday, have affected the emergence and the development of Greek public debt. As it has been, uh, this has been said, in uh, many cases, it is a vulture that is trying to devour a helpless, like animal. In this case is business. Then we have a, a big discussion about the European Union and the IMF bailouts. Is it like the case where the cure, the cure will actually kill the patient? In 2008, just before the crisis, and even in 2009, Greek state, this uh, miserable, this not so productive as some numbers show, this corrupted state would actually cover its expenses. The expenses for the public sector were perfectly covered by the income, the turnovers, of the Greek state. What could not be covered anymore was the debt. And in particular, not the debt, but the interest of the debt. So we have a bailout that in reality is not helping. And this bailout is strictly conditional. It's not unconditional. The conditions are that we have to sell out all the Greek assets that are profitable, cut down all public welfare, and then there is a the question, if the Greek state sells all the assets that there is some income, meaning the harbors, the roads, uh, some real estate, some parts of the public service, for a short run, like for a few months, it will cover the cash fluency in the country. However, after those assets will be sold, there will be no income from the big state. So I really wonder what those people uh, have been thinking when they were saying it. Did they really thought that we will all believe that this is the solution? Saying again that this intervention is really against the presumed neutrality towards ownership. So we see that the European Commission is taking a clear position in favor of privatization. And it is supposed to be the means for reducing the public debt and promoting economic activity. <coughs> so far, the last two years, all these measures have just raised the debt. We have seen no improvement at all, except for the fact that some companies are uh, really thriving. Overall, the, it is clear that the Troika, the EU, IMF bailouts, failed to recognize the nature of the Greek debt crisis. No matter if it's a domestic crisis, European, global, but in reality, I don't think that they actually failed to recognize it. It really seems to me that they know what they're doing, because it's not the first time that this happened. Exactly the same has happened with small variations in Latin America, it has happened in Africa, and it has failed everywhere. So, is there a way for alternatives? The truth is that suggestions, there are many. There are suggestions on the European level, saying that we can uh, make uh, euro bonds, we can uh, make uh, some central bank in Europe supporting us, supporting countries in such case. But at the same time, we have Germany's Federal Minister of Finance, Wolfgang Schäuble, 
which makes arterial methods and I have quotation here, governments in and beyond the Eurozone need not just to commit to fiscal consolidation and improve competitiveness, they need to start delivering on this now. The recipe is as simple as it is hard to implement. Western democracies and other countries faced with high levels of debt and deficits need to cut expenditures, increase the revenues, and remove the structural hindrances in their economies, however politically painful. It's a plain message. It is a clear neoliberal language which unfortunately cannot work at a time of crisis. They ask things that are impossible to be made. The idea of issuing euro bonds seems good for some people. Again, it seems that banks and uh, financial institutions will have some income out of that. Most analysts, most analysts though, agree on the need to provide breathing space to Greece. The situation in Greece is going to a limit that people cannot take it anymore. The cuts on wages have been over 30%. But this is not the real problem. The problem is the gap in positions of work. The unemployment in the youth is preceding the Spanish unemployment. It's over 40%. There are areas of Greece that they have never been thriving economically, but now they have social problems. In northwest Greece, there is a city where they had no suicides for the last like 10, 15 years. Maybe they had one or two. During this summer, they had over 40 suicides. People cannot face their society because of their financial failures. At the same time, we have more strikes than ever. That during this week, almost every public sector was not functioning and the people were protesting. But on top of that, some unions are occupying ministries, like the Ministry for Labor and the Ministry for Finances. In several other cases, public buildings have been occupied by, by their own workforce. And for the first time in Greek history, even police officers, fire police and harbor police in uniform have been protesting, saying that they cannot take it anymore. And this is really the first time that it happens. So I want to conclude that debt audit, which is necessary, is not even discussed by the Greek government. So there is no transparency at all. We really don't know what the situation is, what is the real debt, and what is the debt related to corruption and saving transactions. It is clear that democracy is not applied anymore, since the will of the people is not expressed through its representatives. And it's a sign for the failure of our present-day parliamentary democracy. A solution to this crisis is obviously not the goal of these processes and reforms. It seems that there is no interest to reduce the debt. Actually, in all the readings, the goal is just to reduce the deficit but not the actual debt. I will finish here by stating that the Greek crisis does not seem to be merely financial. It is a political crisis. It is a crisis of institution. It is the failure of liberal free market policies to comply to social needs. So we need to realize that what we need is a change at the level of institutions. It is us the people of the countries of Europe, the citizens, who shouldn't demand for the people in power to change things, we should demand that we take the power. I think that if you allow me to make a similarity, as the Protestants demanded that they donate mediators with God from the Catholic Church, in the same way we can demand and take it in our hands from the modern democracy, this parliamentary democracy, that we don't need mediators to rule ourselves. 
we should realize that we should take the initiative to make the change and not expect for the political scene to change without us being involved. Thank you very much.